Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to the shop. One of the things I love about this shop is that you never know what's going to roll in the door. And today's project is picking up on something that was said to me. And what we're looking to do is mount this guy right here to the side with some degree of integrity. Now the parts that were supplied were supplied with some of the work done I've tweaked it, I wouldn't say considerably, but the tweaks that I've made are valuable. And one of the things that need to be done to this particular component when it comes in is these holes are threaded when it arrives, and they need to be drilled out, threads need to be drilled out, and they need to be countersunk with some degree of integrity, <laughs> with the emphasis on the word integrity. If you got good eyes, you can probably see that that particular countersink is not exactly true to the hole. Therefore, when you torque this thing down, it is going to go for a seat, trying to match the angle on the head of the screw, and everything is just going to go. So, got to figure out how to do it. Not a big deal. You drill it out, you countersink it, you're done. The problem is holding something like this. Now, there's not too many locations where you can squeeze this in a vise. And if you do squeeze this in a vise, you risk cracking this component because it's, you know, it's not exactly made out of uh, stainless steel here. The two big surfaces that I'm focused on are these guys right here in the center that are going to end up pressed up against the wheels and pretty much out of sight. But you don't want to have to scuff the part up or damage the part while you're trying to hold it. So the first thing I do when I look at a piece like this is I pick my target surfaces that I can apply pressure to, that I can squeeze with some type of integrity, and then I go from there. After I've got my surfaces picked out, I'll visualize the fixture that I need to do it, or the position in which I need to present the part. So the part needs to be presented vertically for the drilling and countersinking of these holes, and it needs to be presented horizontally so that I can run an end mill, a very small end mill, through here to assure that the contact surfaces being registered on this part are perpendicular to this face so that when everything is torqued down it stays true to the world like this the last thing you want to see is this thing sitting on here at an angle or at the wrong presentation I want it parallel to the side I want everything to be where it should be and that to me that's very important that's also very important to my customer so let me show you what I came up with. Basically, you need to hold this piece upside down when you put it in the machine, and you can't squeeze it because you'll crack it. This is a very fussy piece, and it's also one of those pieces that you need to spend way more time on the fixture than on the actual machining operation. And it's gotta be repeatable, which is also very important. So here's the fixture. The fixture is an inverted nest. And this is relatively easy to make. If you're going to make a piece like this, pick your contact surfaces and mill a positive on your block for those contact surfaces. Right. That will fit right in there, trust me. If this other piece wasn't loaded in there, this would drop right on top. Easy to visualize. And then flip the block over and knock the center out. So those positives now become nests at the bottom of the trough and you can see how the part sits in there just perfect I am registering these pieces on the top of these little hydraulic cylinders here and that is going to bring me bring me true to the world it is sitting here and the pressure coming from the screws is registering against I guess these would be the axle caps or bearing caps or whatever you want to call those but that's where the screws will hit right now I have a Delrin shim over top of that so that I do not mark the part I will ultimately make precision shims that slide in here like a drawer and locate without the fiddle factor. So there you have it. I can sit it in the vise this way for the milling operation. I can then stand it up and the holes present themselves just perfectly with plenty of room for the countersink tool and the drilling operation to be performed. There you go. That's what I call an upside down fixture. You put the part in and then you turn the fixture upside down and there you go. So realistically the part is not pressed down against any registration surface. It's being pressed up and the whole fixture 
is then pressed down. Keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the versatility of this particular design with the part inverted clamp as such. Access to the underside of those tabs is relatively easy and repeatable. And because I am banking this piece on the surfaces that I want to remain perpendicular to, when I cut that feature under there, it doesn't matter what the rest of the part's doing, that feature is going to be gold. Easily reoriented. The two tabs that I need to drill out and countersink are immediately accessible in this presentation as well. I've used this particular design this fixture concept in many different ways over the years, including just strapping a couple of one, two, three blocks in my vise and clamping a piece to the bottom of it. You can work in between the one, two, three blocks and you can basically access the surface. If you were making something that's got an irregular contour on the outside or domed or something, but you need to relieve a flat on it, that's a great way to do it. Keep this in mind, I call that the inverted bridge concept. It has served me well over the years. I hope it serves you well as well. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well, happy, and safe. All of the above. I am Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas, and I am out.